Hey everyone, hey everyone, hey everyone. <laughs> we are on live. Hello, hello. Um, Rick, tell me if you could, you got me good. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. Play a little musica in the background. Let me know if you could, you could hear it. All right. Oh, What's you got the bubble? Stop playing. No. Damn it. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, I know about the bubble. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you like the bubble? I don't know. I was yes. in the club. Oh, I used to bubble. Oh. Oh. All right. Welcome to the live. Thank you everyone so much for um guys. Are you looking at your are you also able to see the chat or the chat in the no. Facebook? Yeah. Okay. Oh wait. Uh, yes, I can see it. You can see it? Okay. I can see the chat. Cool. I'm about to put up my photo. Cool. Welcome everyone. Welcome everyone to the live path and chat session. Having some difficulties that we cleared up. So we're on live with you. Myself, Mr. Rick J. Brown, and Jamaica Nelson. We want to thank you guys for your patience so far. We know we're starting out a little bit late, but thank you so much for your your patience with us and this live. We got it together now. So we just doing a little jamming right now. You know, while you guys just come in a little bit. We're not gonna make this a, a sad live. So glad. Gonna re rejoice on this live. We're gonna do some, we're gonna be doing some talking. We're gonna be doing some, chatting um rick has his coloring book hey rick is gonna craft with us rick is gonna craft with us and he has a he has a, he has his coloring book rick is gonna be coloring and i got my 24 classic and he got his 24 classic Ooh, crayola colors he has the crayola and mecca Mecca is with us. She's doing something over there on the end. And I got my tools out. Got my tools. So I'm going to be you. doing something while you guys are watching. So all of you who are tuning in right now, I can't see it right now until um, after this is finished. But I can't see if you guys could see like who's tuning in and who's on right now. But yeah, we're going to let a few people come on and we're gonna get started in like about one minute or so. Welcome everybody, welcome, welcome to the page, brother. Welcome, welcome. Welcome everybody, so nice to see you. Yes, tell your friend. Awesome, awesome. Hey, I remember you got, off, got off to a late start playing the uh, um battling with the zoom, but we finally got it. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let me just on here and just see. Awesome. So, all right. Hello, everybody. Hello, Ingrid. Hello, Melissa. Hello, Shauna. Um, hello, Etheridge. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, hello, Rachel. We have a few people coming on. I'm just giving a shout out to a few people that I see um, that I see coming on here. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We're gonna be getting straight to it, pretty much. Again, we want to thank all of you who are are coming on, who are joining us today on this live craft and chat session. Um, we're talking about trauma and loss today. 
-hmm. but we decided to come in, you know, on a, on a happy note, on a good note. And we're going to be doing some laughing. We're going to, some laughing. We're going to be doing some real talk. We're going to be sharing some feelings. Might even cry a little bit, but <laughs> you know, we're, we're really going to be just having a real talk and, um, just sharing some experiences. And, um, I have, uh, Mr. Rick J. Brown on here with you. I have Mecca Nelson here with you. So um, I'm going to have them, you know, just come on and introduce yourself. This is live craft and chat sessions where we are encouraging, uplifting, and inspiring one another while doing some crafts. So like I said, Rick is, has his coloring book out and Mecca has her thing going on. So the oils. Yes, she yes, she has some essential oils that she's gonna be doing. So if you see us <laughs> multitasking, you know, we have something going on over here that we're doing, but we're gonna we hope that you guys and want you to engage with us. Um, we want you to leave questions, comments in the comment box, you know. So and we're just gonna be having dialogue today. All right. So first I am going to <laughs> ask Mecca to um, so I'm going to ask Mecca to introduce herself. So Mecca, go ahead and introduce yourself. So and my name is Mecca. Break a, break a one, two, four, your mind. Yeah, that's how you like it. That's how I like to do it right there, right there. That's my little flow right there. But um, yes, my name is Mecca Nelson, and I am an entrepreneur, an author, and a mother, uh, a forever student, always learning. I also... Um, I provide services inside the Department of Education. Uh, I'm a speaker. I speak on different platforms. My business is based around health and wellness. And I'm also a gold star spouse. If you don't know what that means, that, that is basically uh, my late husband was killed in Iraq in 2006 when my daughter was three years old. And, you know, that's kind of how my story became about. So, um, mm -hmm. I know that's like a nice little snippet about me, but you'll start to know more about me during this whole movement right here we got going awesome. on. Awesome, awesome. And Mr. Rick J. Brown, share a little bit about yourself, what you do. Uh, welcome, guys. Uh, my name is Mr. Rick. That's what they called me out there. Um, I'm the education. I work for an organization called Council for Unity, which I met over 20-something years ago. They saved me. Um, I am a single father. I cook. I clean. I do laundry. I do nails. I do hair. <laughs> I have to listen to gossip on this ear, listen to gossip on this ear for my three baby girls um, that I'm raising by myself. Uh, and um, you're going to learn more about that and that whole ordeal in a few minutes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, um, yeah, uh, thank you guys once again. And uh, as you know, Rick and Mecca have introduced um, themselves. Uh, you know, first, I just want to um, just say, you know, we want we also first, you know, that today is September 11th, and that you know it's a memorial day for many, especially those who have lost loved ones, those who have lost friends, um, you know, acquaintances, coworkers. And we do want to remember them today, um, you know, and just keep a special place in, in our hearts and our minds for those and respect, um, you know, out of respect for those who have lost their lives um, 19 years ago on this day. I'm pretty sure that we we also remember that day. Um, Mecca, where were you on September 11th, 19 years ago? You remember? <laughs> Funny question. I was working at Gap. And they wanted me to go work at the store in the World Trade. Right. And I was going to do it, but something in my spirit was like, no, don't go there. Usually you don't turn up extra, extra shmoney, right? You don't turn right. up extra shmoney. Right. But I was like, you know what? I said, not today. I was laying in my bed, but I did hit up one of my coworkers and I said, I don't want to say his name, but I said, hey, can you work for me? At the World Trade, I said because um, I didn't I didn't feel too well. I didn't feel well, and I really didn't feel well. So, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't go. Usually, I push myself, but that, that day it wasn't like 
it wasn't that day to push myself. So um, I was actually in my bed and I heard a big doom, doom, doom. And mm-hmm. uh, I called my coworker when I found out what happened. I called my coworker to ask him if he was okay. And he was like, he was telling me what was going on. And he was actually almost there. He didn't even hit the building. Mm-hmm. And I'm so happy he didn't hit the building because that would have, I, I feel like that probably would have been on my mind. Right. Uh, God forbid mm-hmm. if something happened to him. So, um, yeah. But there's a lot connected. It's a, so much connected me with 9 11. I feel like mm-hmm. it, but I just wanted to answer your question. I'll go about 9 11. If you want me to say it now, I'll say it now. Oh, we could, we could, we could hold that a little bit. All <laughs> right, gotcha. And uh, Rick, where were you on September 11? Uh, if you can, if you can remember back there. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, it's like yesterday to me. Um, I was in Brooklyn Red Hook with the peers. Uh, we was having a meeting. It was about 20 staff members having a meeting. Um, all I remember was the uh, receptionist running in the meeting and said a plane hit the World Trade Center. So mm-hmm. we're all thinking quickly, like, what, maybe a small plane, somebody did an accident. So from our vantage point, we came outside and we can see across the water to the um, Twin Towers. It's about 25 of us outside. One of the co-workers said, yo, look at that other plane. And we all looked and we saw the second plane circling around and then hit the building. And that's when all the men on the pier lost, mm-hmm. right? We just wow. lost our minds for that. Wow. And we wow. stood there because debris started to come over the water. And when the first building fell, mm-hmm. everybody just left to go get their kids. It was just shocking. Wow. Yeah, that was, um, yeah, that was for, for everyone. Uh, you know, it was definitely a day to remember. Um, I was in school actually, and then had to rush home after school. Um, that's what I remember. I remember like at the time, like all schools just, you know, everything just shut down, you know, after that. So everybody was rushing to see like if everybody's okay. And, um, you know, I had an uncle who, um, thank God, did make it. He worked um, in the the Marriott Hotel that was like right under it. So um, thank God he was able to make it over with the many that had to walk over the bridge, you know, walk all the way from their home and you know, so it was just crazy, um, you know, but I do know people that have, you know, lost, you know, loved ones um, due to that specific event, you know, so, um, you know, one, the one thing that I want to start off while we, you know, like I said, guys, um, those of you who are watching, thank you for coming on. If you see us multitasking, we're crafting here, but we're also talking to you, you know, we're, you um, we are, you know, making sure that we check the comments sometimes too, and, um, you know, to engage with you. If you have any questions and comments, um, we just want to thank you once again for coming on. So the one thing I want to start off with is um, the fact that, you know, with trauma, you cannot be prepared, right? No one is ever prepared for a traumatic experience. Um, No one is ever prepared to get certain news sometimes even when it comes to the loss of a loved one or the loss you know a friend family member sometimes there's no amount of preparing that you can do sometimes there are situations where you know you can kind of prepare your mind and but still even though you prepare your mind you can't prepare your heart you know because that is something that is, is so deep you know when you lose somebody close when you lose somebody close to you friend family member whomever it is you know, or somebody that has had an impact on your life, you can prepare your your mind, but you can't prepare your heart. And even then, sometimes in the moments where you thought that you might have prepared for it, um, you you it's kind of like you in that moment you forget everything that you were preparing for. You know, so even in those moments where you think that you got it all together, um, sometimes you really don't. And trauma and loss. Um, you know, I believe that aside from, you know, today and that trauma, we also want to talk about some other traumas. There are a list um, when myself, um, Rick and Mecca, we were, you know, just talking the other day and just kind of brainstorming and having some good old convo about, uh, you know, the topic of trauma and loss. 
I know that there will probably be people that are some of you that may be watching that have been through your own trauma and loss. Um, I've spoken to people personally and myself um, who have gone through trauma and loss. You have a whole list of things. And some of those things that I'm going to list, um, I'm going to list them. Um, and like I said, we're just having some real talk today because some people, they do not see certain things or situations in their life or things that happen to them as a form of trauma. So then when you grow, when you get older, when you get into an adult, especially if you are traumatized as a child, when you grow into an adult and then you start to have certain habits or a certain mindset about something, or you act a certain way, not knowing that it is really because of the trauma that you received, because now you're older and because you have said, you know what, I got to move on with my life and I got to, I got to live um, my life. You kind of go on with life and just go with the flow, not really realizing that this is the way you are, or this is the way you act, or these are the habits that you have. Um, and these are the things that contributed to your life now because of that trauma that, that you went through or that loss that you never dealt with and that you never got over it. Um, so right now, um, I want to have Mecca um, share her story, um, just a, a bit of her story about her experience with trauma. Um, and, you know, she's going to share her experiences with trauma and um, she is going to even uh, tell you how she was able to, um, you know, over overcome or, or what I would say is I don't want you to share how you overcame it yet, but I want you to share some of the struggles that you had in trying to like overcome that trauma. So Mecca, you could go ahead. Uh, I would say some of the struggles were uh, dealing with uh, judgment. Well, before you uh, share the struggles, I want you to share your, what caused the trauma. Oh. For, for people who do not know. Come a little closer, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my experience was more of living everyday life. La, 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 la. I just signed a contract with the chaplain in the military. La, 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 la. To do some work with them. And next thing you know, I get a knock on my door. La 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 la. And they tell me, Oh, your husband has been killed. I'm like, what? They looking all sad. And I'm like, I'm laughing like something was funny. It wasn't funny. But to me it was because I thought he was playing a joke on me. Because he was a jokester. He was a jokester. So when they came to me and they told me what happened, that was like a devastation. It was to hear that uh, someone that you've been with since the teenager was killed in Iraq, it really affected me. And then I was stuck with a three-year-old to take care of my own. So that right there alone kind of shifted things. That right there alone kind of moved some things around. So that's right. what created like a different space for me. And also right. with like, people because there's a lot of people that in my life I didn't want to really be bothered with because they didn't understand where I was in my mind right but it was only the grace of God that covered me right, right. so with that being said it was that whole process that transition that learning how to live without you know that was hard that was right. a very difficult moment to live without when you're so used to that one thing and you're so used to someone taking care of things for you and you know you're used to living life in a certain way and then now you're by yourself like who knew right. you know you're gonna be raising a kid by yourself like who knew that right. I didn't know that I definitely didn't plan it it wasn't planned right so that was something I had to learn how to take in obviously right. it was hard to accept it was hard to receive but I had to take it in I had to live through life but I tell you there's something that the chaplain said to me and I got so mad at him for saying it but as time went by I understood why he said it he said things happen for a reason and a purpose not everything is created in the way that you want it and how you want it right. and you know I remember what he said to me and when he said that that kind of stuck in the back of my head 
But what really got me was when I fell out on the floor and my daughter was like, mommy, it's going to be okay. I'm like, this three-year-old don't know what's going on. She don't know what's happening. So how could she tell me it's going to be okay? Right. You know, but that little voice, his voice and the little voice of, of, of my daughter just really gave me a lot of, uh, it, it gave me that space to live. You know, right, uh, right. because at any time you go through something, you, you have so many emotions going on, but those Absolutely. voices just allowed me to continue to live those voices. So that's right. exactly what I allowed myself to continue to do. Although I was putting up so much fight, going through so much, learning how to, hey, I had to learn how to pay bills. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't doing that. Because he was uh, the provider. So. He was doing every, although I had a, Full time running my business full time, and right. I was in school full time. My money wasn't being spent on on like stuff. Just I just paid the phone bill and that's it. Mm -hmm. And if I needed to buy some groceries or go buy stuff for my daughter or myself, that was it. Or him, right. or if I wanted to, you know, that was it. So I had to learn how to relive life. Right, right. That right there was hard and difficult. That and right that's there, what I can't tell you how much of a stress that was. Yes, that was when it comes to like, you know, trauma is you have to learn how to relive your life. You have to learn mm -hmm. how to kind of mm -hmm. like find yourself as people say, mm -hmm. you know, like find yourself all over again, mm -hmm. find your mindset, mm -hmm. find who you are. Yeah. It really so was. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a lot. It was like reliving and then raising a kid that think the daddy is still coming home. I think the daddy is going to come to the door. I even thought he was coming to the door. I thought it was all, still a joke for after some time. Like, well, maybe they lost him. Maybe they couldn't find him, you know, because he had a closed casket. Right, because a grenade, right. grenade propel went through the tank and it took wow. off his face. So all he had left was a chin. Wow. And like, so it couldn't be an open casket. It was a closed casket. Wow. So that's, that, that's the part where like, uh, even when I tried to see him in the casket, they said, I think you want to see him the way he was and then when I went to the funeral oh. home the funeral home guy the funeral home guy told me that but then I, I swear I was crying so much my face was so swollen like I had such a headache but I didn't even care I still kept crying my eyes right. were swollen and I, I felt like his spirit came to me his spirit just came to me and I tried to look at him it was like no I don't want you to look at me I want you to remember me the way that you saw me and he was apologizing. So it was just like, it was just so much. It was right. just, it was devastating for me. Right. Like when I see where, I, where I see where I was at now and I, before and now I see where I'm at now, I'm like in a total different space from where I was. Cause I felt like I was in like a little, a little box that I was never right. going to get out the little dog box. Like I was like curled up. That's how I feel that I was. I right, felt like I was right. like that, but you know, right. I, I, and I also felt like God forgot about me. I also felt like uh, God did not think about me. I felt like, you know, like why I did everything right. I did what I was supposed to do, and what I realized was that. Um, and many people get like by, that, you yes, know, right? They yes. feel like, you know, you had went through a traumatic experience in your life, or something happened. And you're like. God, like, you know, God, are you there? Or you automatically think mm -hmm. like, you know, you know, forgot, you feel forgotten about. It was, that's how it was. I felt like that. But then as time went by, I started to build my relationship with God uh, more and more and more. And I started to understand and see a lot of what he was planning and a lot of what he had in store for me. So that was kind of right. like a process for me to take in that it wasn't always easier to take in. Right yeah and how how was like the the you know after you found that right because i'm sure that you know you went through your moments of denial you know you went through your mo after the shock you went through your moments of denial you went through a whole lot of series of up and downs and still trying to maintain who you were at the same time like through through those transitions because i i remember that you said that you found yourself in a, like a box you know, for a, mm -hmm. for a long time. And mm -hmm. I want to say, you know, to those, you know, who are watching or listening, if you've been through any, you know, of your own trauma. And when I said earlier, I was talking about trauma and going to list some things is because some, sometimes when you go through things when you're younger or as a child, 
as a youth and then you grow into an Mm -hmm. adult, you don't realize that it was trauma. And um, Mm -hmm. a list of things, for example, is is abuse. You know, it could be Mm -hmm. if you experience domestic abuse in your home or if you see yourself, you know, you were abused Mm -hmm. or it could be sexual abuse. Um, Mm -hmm. It can be, um, uh, you know, various uh, types of abuse. Um, Trauma can be even, you know, uh, something that happened, you know, a traumatic accident Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, the loss of a loved one. So many lists, you know, a list of different things that can, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that can traumatize you. Bullying that can traumatize Mm -hmm. you, you know, if you were Mm -hmm. were bullied when you were younger and, you know, it it Mm -hmm. affects you when you, you know, you get older, you know, Mm -hmm. so you know, and you can find yourself in a box, you know, these are the things that cause people to feel suicidal. Mm -hmm. It causes people to feel Mm -hmm. like they don't have anyone, you know? Um, and that's why I said it's going to be a real talk today because, um, sometimes we like to pretend that we're okay. You know, we like to pretend that it's all good, you know? And the thing is that it's not even like, you know, you're not going off God's strength. You're going off your own strength, um, in the first place. Yep. And you only have but so much, you know, you only have but so much to give. So yep. you say that you found yourself in a box. I believe that many people find themselves in a box, you know, um, where it's like, you know, something happens and it's like, you don't know how to get out of that box. You don't know how to maneuver yourself. Mm-hmm. So so when you, when you say you went through that box, I want you to tell me a little bit about about that and you know how you found yourself coming out of that box you know and getting better and better uh, <laughs> uh I, I honestly was like that for some years mm. years years because you know what i truly believe when you hold on to to things and you never really like allow yourself to release it right. still has a hold on you and you're not able to uh, receive your blessings you're not able to progress level up in life and you're not able to see clear so right. everything is froggy your mind your soul your spirit your emotions your movement everything is froggy right. so uh i would say let me tell you something that's gonna be like yeah, what the let me tell you something i felt like there were so many things that I needed to do, but I had this thing where I felt like I was too busy to do it. Uh That space of procrastination. (laughs) Yeah, that was it. And what I ended up doing was I, I was going to work one day and I remember saying, Oh, I want to go do this. I want to go do that. I I need to go do that. But no, my schedule was too busy. Excuse me. What I ended up doing was, I went to work. I asked my mother to babysit my daughter. So she had to come to my apartment and babysit her. And can I tell you how home people give me all types of signs and I was not listening. Mm-hmm. I was not listening. I heard him speaking in my ear, literally heard him. I didn't listen. Mm-mm-mm. Thank you. Thank you. But <laughs> I tell you this, I went to work. I, I didn't get too far. Mm -hmm. I went and I got injured at work. Mm -hmm. That was Mm -hmm. like, I just, I just felt like that was a sign of God saying, um, I told you to sit your tail down Mm -hmm. and do (laughs) what needs to be done. I felt that that was it. And when, when that happened, I just started seeing so many things flashing before me and like, uh, even though that was a heavy process because that process caused me not to be able to work for like some years right. and I had surgeries, uh, injections, mm-hmm. therapy, you know, it was just a whole process, but that right. was that moment. You know how sometimes you have to sit still. Right. Yeah. That was my moment to sit still and create. And some things happen in life for us to sit still. Yeah. For him to get and our that's attention. What it was. That's right. what it was. That's what it was. Mind you, I, I was going to church hardcore, hard body all the I was in church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. I was in all the time. I would leave mm-hmm. work to get make sure I got to church. Even if I got there some time late, I still got to church. I was in like a hardcore, but I wasn't listening. Right. Mm-hmm. So I swear when it happened, man down, I got injured the next month. 
I was already hunting down places that could help me handle my business, that could help me, you know, give me steps to do to open and start my business. Right. It was right. so funny. I had a I had a sling on one arm and a walking cane in the other. Oh. Couldn't carry. <laughs> couldn't carry. You really didn't want to sit down. I, I couldn't. <laughs> if I sat down, it hurt too. If I stood right. up, it hurt too. But I sat down. But the thing was, I received a um. I received a um. So what I did was. Uh-huh. Sorry. So what I ended up doing was I um I ended up taking a class. The guy was working with me on one on one. And as the person was working with me one on one, hold on one minute, guys. I'm no problem. No problem. Yes, yeah, so um Mecca is just handling something right now. But Rick, where you at? I'm still here. I'm still here. Okay, good. <laughs> I want to make sure you can still hear us good. Can you hear yeah, me? I can. We can hear you, oh, Mecca. Okay. Yes. All right. So basically what happened was I ended up getting information to help me build my business. And as I started to build my business, I was, I felt. Uh -huh. Do you guys see me on? Do you see me? Because I feel like my you. internet is spazzing out. Okay. No, we okay. see you and hear you. Okay. So it's going in and out. Seem like it. <laughs> oh, okay. Here you go. <laughs> okay. So I felt like um, there were so many signs, but then the lady that was doing my hair, because I couldn't do my hair, so I had to cut, I cut my hair off. I had a nice big humongous fro, but uh -huh. I had to cut it off because I couldn't comb the fro because I couldn't lift my arms. Oh. So um, she was telling me about the guy that helped her build her business. Now to, to this day, she she's like a, I think a six, seven figure business owner. Uh -huh. And she's been in business for years, but she helped me get connected to some good people that they just gave me stuff to work on and things to do that I was uh -huh. able to actually complete the work while I was like in the house. And see, uh -huh. it was a, a still moment, but the still right. moment was for me to maintain the business. And uh -huh. even though I was moving around, the moving around was for me to go take care of things, to take care of business and to make sure I took care of myself. So that's right. what that was. That's what that still moment was. Right. Um it wasn't for me to go go here, work, 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 and, and never take the time out to do. I was supposed right. to been doing those things, but I wasn't listening. So right. in that space, I started to build my business, get the name, learn about mm -hmm. patents, learn about copywriting, learn about trademarking, learning about all this other stuff that I never really like thought of. Creating right, because names. you're always moving around. Mm-hmm. Never right. took the time to just sit down and do it. I tell you, throughout the whole process, I was able to accomplish so much in that time frame. And then I was like, once I got better, I got those surgeries I needed to get. I uh -huh. went to school for massage therapy because <laughs> uh -huh. nice. I got some magic fingers, some uh -huh. blessed fingers, some anointed fingers. And <laughs> so I had to like, I had to, it was like in me. And like God right. just like putting stuff in me, putting stuff in me, putting stuff in me. And that's kind of how like at that moment where it was a standstill moment, but it really was it was a standstill moment for me to like get away from everything else right. and focus on me and my relationship right. with God. And that was right. my moment of where it allowed me to propel. So now you want to know where I'm at today, you say? Oh, well, we go, we're gonna get to where you at today. Okay. Okay. But hold, but, but hold that thought, hold that thought, save, save some, save some. <laughs> but we are going to go now to, um, uh, as Mecca was sharing, um, she was just sharing about, you know, the trauma that she went through in the loss of her late husband, um, who was killed in Iraq, you know, uh, for those who you're just coming on and she was just telling a little bit about some of the things that she went through and that she faced and uh, what kind of the things that kind of led her up to, um, you know, her journey of progressing and, and moving on. And now I'm going to have Mr. Rick, you're on the spot. I'm gonna put you on the spot. I'm gonna have you share um, oh, your experience, you know, and- um, what you wanna yeah. know. So we're gonna just have you share your experience, um, you know, uh, your traumatic experience. 
All right. Um, I guess it started four years and six months ago. Right. Um, my child's mother of my last three baby girls, um, uh-huh. she passed away due to complications after childbirth. Can you turn up your your? Sorry. Can you turn up your volume a little bit? It's okay. Um, how's that? Yes, that's good. Yes. She gave she gave birth at, at like eleven o'clock, and by one a.m. she was gone. Mm. Um, that was the start of Mr. Rick single dad. You know, I had left the hospital. I spoke to the doctor. I said, Doc, how long is she going to be out? Because they had a C-section, so she's she going to be out for like an hour and a half. I said, All right, Doc, I'm going to run home, check on the other kids, and come back. So as I'm going home, check on the kids, make me a little sandwich. My phone rings. The hospital said, yo, come back immediately. So as I run back to the hospital, I go on the second floor. There's like maybe 20 doctors in the room. So I can't get in the room right now. I don't know what's going on. So I'm standing on the outside. Then I see them all leave. And then I see the doctor who delivered all her children was there. I said, Rich, she's good. She's had a little complication. She's back. I said, all right, great. Before I can go in there, Another doctor, I guess, pushed the button again, and I heard that code blew to the room. Mm. Then everybody rushed back in the room. And when the doctor came out, he looked at me, didn't speak, gave me a look, and I fainted. I fainted. I passed out. I woke up. I got three doctors in my face. I'm like, this, give me a, what was going on? He fainted. Okay, give me a second. Give me, let me just make sure that I... I heard what I heard before I fainted. That's where I fainted. And um, since then, you know, it's been it's been me raising my three girls. My baby girl hasn't ever seen the mom. Never seen mom. You know, mm. because she's a baby. Um, yeah, that that was you know how it started almost four years ago, and and I've never really shared that story. Mm. You know, I didn't I didn't put it out there like that. I was in a bad place, right. like. Depressed is not the word. When I say I, I couldn't, I couldn't hold my baby girl because I was crying and laughing. I couldn't hold her. I could not hold her. I couldn't because I was, I didn't know what emotion to give her. When I hold her, should I laugh or should I cry? Mm. That was like that for like two years. Wow. Two years. My sister stepped up to the plate and helped me uh, raise her because mentally I wasn't there. I'm used to the mother being there doing the motherly thing, you know, the hair, the nails, and, you know, stuff like going bra shopping, and now that's on me. So I took about two weeks to myself, locked myself in the house, um, got rid of my kids at my sister's house, my niece, she watched them, Mm -hmm. and um, I just turned off all the lights in the house, and I went dark. So you went through, like, a super, super dark moment. Super. Whatever whatever you think dark is, times by ten. That's dark. Mm-hmm. That's where I was. You mm-hmm. know, I didn't know how to function. I didn't know if I could function as a single dad. I didn't know if I was gonna be good as a single dad raising girls. Mm-hmm. You know? I'm not right. used to raising girls, you know. Right. I, I tell my daughters this all the time. Y'all just met me. You ten you just <laughs> met me ten years ago. Before that, <laughs> you did not know me. I was not in the house cooking, doing nails and stuff like that. I was outside. Right. right. You know? But um, we, we, we here now. We here now. Right, right, right. So, and, you know, through through that, you know, experience that you had, um, you know, and this, you know, where the box that you were in, you know, how did you find yourself coming out of that same, you know, that same thing, out of that traumatic situation, um, how did you find yourself coming out and saying to yourself, like, all right, this is what happened in my life, or this is what happened to me, this is a situation, but, like, I gotta keep pushing forward, like, how did you come out of that, like, dark place where you were, like, all right, I have to, you know, I gotta keep pushing forward? It was one of my coworkers. It was three things that woke me back up to the world. One of my coworkers shocked me. He called me on the phone as I'm going through all this. 
He's like, Rick, what's up? I'm like, I'm good, yo, I'm good. I'm going over there. I got a handle. He's like, no, Rick, stop. I'm like, yo, I did stop. He says, no, Rick, stop moving now. I'm like, I look at the phone like, wow. He said, put your head down. And when my coworker speaks, you listen because he has that credibility where you're going to listen to him. Like, he knows right. some stuff. Right. So I, I stopped in my tracks. I put my head down and he prayed for me for real quick. That was one of the things that got me not through it, but trying to understand I have to still keep going with my journey. Mm -hmm. Right. The second thing is when I came back to school on my desks, there was, I want to say, 60 to 70 uh, letters that kids wrote. Mm. Mr. Briggs is going to be okay. Oh. Um, Tom Hills or Wounds. One kid said, Mr. Rick, I'll babysit for you. I'm like, you're only 15. You can't babysit. But it was cards like that that mm -hmm. woke me back up. Mm. And um, and Tamala Man, <laughs> that song, Take Me to the King. Oh, yeah. that, got, that just got me all the Right. Who doesn't? Who, 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 Tad, Take Me to the King gets everybody. <laughs> Take Me to the King and Change Me, that, Oh God. That, yeah. That 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 took me. That took me. And 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 my mom when she when she called me, said, Baby, I, I'm coming down there. I said, Mom, I'm good. She's like, No, you my baby, and I'm coming down there. Mm -hmm. Go pick me right. up the airport. <laughs> right. And I just, that's my mom, you know. Right. But yeah, stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, one of, one of, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that, Rick, and sharing your experience. And even to, you know, um, people that are going to be watching after this, um, even to, you know, even to the men, you know what I mean? Because we were just even talking about how, you know, women, as women, we mm -hmm. are more, we tend to show emotion a little more mm -hmm. than men, um, be mm -hmm. more of the emotional beings, of course, mm -hmm. you do have the men that are like more in touch with their feelings, you know, and their mm -hmm. feminine side and able to relate to the woman. But you do have majority, you know, majority of men um, when, you know, as a man, when you experience um, a traumatic experience and, and you know, you just, you, you, you don't verbalize it, you know, like men don't verbalize it. They kind of more internalize or you verbalize it, but in other ways you know, you verbalize it in other ways. Um, right. Some people verbalize it through drinking. Some people Everything verbalize cold, it through, right. right. Yeah, like, you know, so so as a man, Rick, I want to know, um, through the experience that you experienced as a man, I want to know how, how has it kind of changed your mindset um, as a man, as a father? How has it changed your mindset? I know it's a deep question, right? Uh, where to begin? <laughs> um, I'll start with most men who will whip somebody and as children have it in their mindset like I did. Because you also were had, you also were planning good. to get married also, right? And We were engaged, yes. And right. we went down to the courts. We had a little $35 money in order. We were both online. She looked at me, <laughs> I'm looking at her like we almost nice. Like, you ready right. to do this? You really want to do this? We almost next. Right. I ain't scared. I ain't scared either. We almost right. next. And we get to the we get to the window, like, uh, I'm scared. Me too. We ran out. <laughs> you know? But um Right. <laughs> so, to, to, to the to the men out there that that, that think that close. Um leaving the kids in the house. That I mean I'm talking inches, millimeters. Millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. How, oh yes. So how has oh. that, like, you know, shaped your mindset today? It's it it's it it has to change your mindset because if you're used to just leaving the kids in the house and then as a man we're going to go play basketball for a couple of hours, or we're going to go hang out with the homies for a couple of hours. I'm gonna go to the bar for a couple of hours. Right. You think that house is being maintained? That house is more crazier because the kids are in there. I know firsthand. You know, right. it's just more than just opening the door, throwing a sandwich in a room, turning the TV on, and the kids are good for seven hours. No, 
It's not like that. I know that now. I used to right. think that, but now I know it's different. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, there's much more stepping up a lot of men have to do with raising their kids. And they go a challenge. I know you're not ready for it, but they go a challenge. To all the men out there that's living with a girl who has kids, I challenge you for one week to do everything you do mm -hmm. in your daily routine with your children. Mm -hmm. Everything. I've taken my girls to get my hair cut. They sat right there in the bar. And right there they mm -hmm. had to. You know, I'm taking my girls. We had to go shopping. Mm -hmm. You got to come with me. I got a doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. They got to come with me. So I challenge you to take care of your kids every day. That's breakfast, lunch, showers. If they scrape their knee, you got to put the medicine in the band they know they need. You got to read them a bedtime story. You got to brush their teeth at mm -hmm. nighttime. You got to wake mm -hmm. them up in the morning. You got to pack their school mm -hmm. lunch. You got to check their homework. You got to do the hair. You got to do the nails. You got to. And listen, women out there, all women out there, respect and salute your hustle. Your job is not easy being a single mother raising kids by yourself without no help. I know now. Now I'm on the other side. So now I get mm -hmm. it. Before I didn't right. get it, now I get it. Right. Right, absolutely. And, um, you know, thank you. Thank you for sharing that too, Rick, you know, because um, I believe that we're all, we're, we're, you know, some of us and even some people watching this are at different, you know, levels, you know, we're out mm -hmm. in our relationship with God, um, mm -hmm. different um, stages of life, you know, and, you know, it takes a lot, you know, from a man to say, you know, especially when it comes to, for some reason, with men, between men, man and God, and really, because if you go to any church, you will see majority of the congregation are women. Mm -hmm. You will see that, right? Majority, so unless true. it's a so church true. that is like, it's men only <laughs> or something, or a majority of the time, if you walk into a church, you'll see that most of she them more women. are women, <laughs> right? You know, um, and then you'll see, like, you might see women with their husbands. You might, mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, it's, it's not often that you might see, like, the man comes to church and is, is upholding their family or standing in the gap for their family or, you know, so you find that, like, oftentimes yeah. it's like the woman that runs to God, you know, and is, like, having that relationship to God and more open mm -hmm. and receptive. But for the man, it's like a struggle, like, to yeah. open up. Yeah, that's you know, true. And, I don't feel like it's just because of the fact that, um, you know, when you see, when, when you, you kind of struggle, like, you know, with the, with the, the, with faith and, you know, you, you might feel weird at first because, you know, you're just talking, you're used to talking to a person and, you know, I've heard all these things, you know, but I think just for a man to open up, you know what I mean? Um, I think it, it you know, it, it's, it's a lot. So like I was saying that, um, you know, to, we're all at a different level in our relationship with God. And, you mm -hmm. know, like I was saying that, you know, thank you for Rick for sharing your experience because, you know, to, to, you know, publicly admit that like, man, like I struggle with these things, you know what I mean? That, you know, like you had to step up and be the father that you needed to be, you know, and not take certain things, you know, in, li in life for granted, um, you know, that you had to change, even change your mindset as a man, you know what I mean? You know, because mm -hmm. now going forward, you but, know, and when I say, know, if, yeah, yeah, and, and when I say I had to change everything from night and day from being a dad who comes home at let's say seven o'clock when the kids already came from school, they already right. take homework, they already take their bath, from being that three or four hour dad to now right. being a twenty four hour dad is a different dad. The only time I have me time. Is when they go to sleep. Then I can mm -hmm. be take my dad hat off and put my brick hat on. When they up, right. I'm dad all day. Mm -hmm. And right. and another reason why I had to step up. Everybody raises children different. Yep. I understand yep. that. And I respect that. I can't tell you what you do in your household or how you talk to your kids. But what blew my mind was when we was in the park one day and. This kid couldn't have been no more than four or five years old. And he's singing the rap lyrics to the most gangsterous song I've heard. And the mother's right that I get. That's my baby. Mm. That's my baby. I'm like, okay, you know what? I got to be a parent to my children and raise my girls the right way and teach them how to speak and articulate mm -hmm. themselves 
and dress properly as a young black mm -hmm. female in America today. Right. And education is number one in my mm -hmm. household. That's so right. they, education is key. Without that, you don't know nothing. Right. Right. Oh, Absolutely. sorry. I know everybody see this. This is my keepsake. Okay. This okay. is my little locket that I wear every day. Right. This is her. She had one request. Like right. I said, when you're with somebody, you speak. You speak. If you're with somebody for a long time and you have that connection, yes. you talk right. about everything yes. under the sun. Mm. You don't yep. have that connection, you don't know certain things about your girlfriend or boyfriend. Because yep. when you talk about that, yep. right. but we spoke about the afterlife, how we wanted to be remembered if that did happen. And she mm. had one request. Put me in a locket, cremation, and send me to all my family in a locket. And that's what wow. I did. Wow. 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 And it's just to show you, it like, it's just to show you how, like, life is not promised, you know? You know, that's 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 just yeah. to show you how, like, life is not promised. Yeah. And it, right. go, it all goes back to when I say that um, you can never prepare, really, for trauma. You know what I mean? You can never prepare for certain experiences um, that, that happen in life. And, um, you know, who, whoever you are, whether you're a man, you're a woman, um, you know, and if you're watching this right now, if, you know, you're watching this, um, you're going to watch this after for the people that see it after, um, you know, I just want to encourage everyone to, no matter what you've experienced, you know, just as you've seen Mecca, you know, share about her late husband and, um, you know, Rick share. You know, um, I just want to, to, to just encourage you to keep, you know, putting one foot in front of the other, because that is, mm -hmm. that is what they did. You know, when you go through certain experiences, it's like, that's what you have to do. Like Rick, you were saying that after that happened, after that experience, you found you, you were crying and laughing at the same time, you know, because it, it was like two extremes, you know, you have your daughter, but then, you know, you lost the most, the most important thing you know, which is her mother. And um, it's like, it's like now you have to feed that love and that energy into your daughter, you mm -hmm. know? So I believe that, you know, even as, you know, men and uh, um, women, um, I hope this encourages, even especially the men, I hope this encourages you to, um, to, to open up, to, um, yeah. to share, yeah. to know that, you yeah. are not the only one who is going through it, who has been through something, you know, that is alone, that you have times in life where you will, you might find yourself in that dark place, mentally, mm -hmm. physically, emotionally. And um, even in the links, um, I do want to post, I'm going to be posting some links to um, some, some uh, like phone numbers that you can call. They have different numbers, like they have the abuse hotline number, domestic abuse number. They have, there's so many, um, you know, places um, for, for help, you know, that you are not alone. There is mm -hmm. some way out. There is yep. some way out. And I also want to encourage because- One thing about- Yes. One thing about the organization I work for, Council Community. Um, yes. The main mission is- Conversation. Yep. Like you can have you can have people around you right now that you've been friends with for years, but you've never opened that conversation. Yes. Never. Yes. You That's talked true. about Fact. sports. You talked about poem. You talked about hair, fashion, the awards, but never spoke deep. I'm like, hold on, you went through that too. Me too. I That's didn't know that. Because we never didn't... spoke. And you why? Just, <laughs> We were talking about judgment, right? Yeah. And oh, that, yeah. I didn't yeah, know. judgment. Yeah, but you know why a lot of people don't really speak out about it? That's a good point, Rick. Is because there's a people judge you. It could be friends. It could be family. They'll be like, "Oh well, oh you're, you're wasting your life. Your life goes on. It's okay. Just go do what you need to go do, and this and this." But you don't understand. You're not in my life, so you can't really navigate what. And and when it comes to judgment, it's like when people judge you because you chose to live a certain life because of what you experienced, then it's, it's, a, it's as if it's a problem for them because you're not the person that they figured you was or would be or the same person you were before the situation happened. You're never right. the same. 
you're never the same. So the thing is, it's it's a lot of judgment. This there's a lot of things that come with this space. Is it's a lot of like a judgment. It's uh people are constantly or some of them will use your story against you. I experienced that when my story was put inside the newspaper. Um, I experienced the people, once they knew that stuff that nobody never knew anything. Years go by, nobody. They just, some people just knew that he was killed in action, but nobody really knew what I was experiencing because I never showed it. You never knew it because I just, I walked in my beautiful space. But what I noticed was once it was posted in the newspaper, and people read it, and people that knew me, then people that didn't know me was Googling um, and like looking for me on, on social media and stuff like that. But the people that knew me, you know, you could tell the people who got good spirits and the people with spirits that's not so nice, they was using my story against me. Mm-hmm. So when they read the story in the newspaper, they took parts of what, they took what they felt like they could use and and like throw at me with it. like. You're not going to sit there and use what I put inside the story in the newspaper against me because I know you're the enemy that's trying to do that right now, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's actually the point where you come to a space where you say, you know, of course, you're going to pray. Of course, you're going to rebuke it. And of course, you got to sit there and remember that you're not going to let that person make you come out of the space that you're in, right? Because that was where I was at. That's not where I'm at now. So because right. they read it, they was trying to use like bits and pieces and I would tell them to their face. Don't do that. That's not right. You wasn't doing that before. Don't start that now. Mm-hmm. You know, and then some people feel like even when you confront them, it's an issue. But what they trying to do is sometimes what I feel like is the enemy likes to bring up that stuff that had you in that dark space to bring you back to that dark space, right? Yeah. But when you have oh, yeah. the strength oh, yes. and the willpower, oh, yes. oh, yeah. right? And the guidance, like I always say, God gave me favor, God gave me grace, and he allowed me to not judge myself. And he allowed me to give myself gratitude, right? And right. to forgive those people that came at me the way that they was coming at me. Because when you have people that's doing things like that, it's like, they want you to go back to where you're going. They want right. to see you there. Oh, well, I never knew she was going through that. You know Let me test her. Yes. Yes. That's why it's, That's why a lot of because people they're don't in speak the bad about place. it. Mm-hmm. And don't want to mm-hmm. write. Don't want to admit it. And they even go through their own stuff. And they try to mm-hmm. use, they, they try to take their nonsense out on you. That's what right. I learned. And I learned all of the that times life. that people that judge you are the ones who are trying to hide I look at it like, what they're going through. Yes, yes, yes. I look at it like Cat Williams. When Cat Williams said, when Cat Williams said, um, if somebody's talking about you, it's a good thing. That means you're on their minds. Mm-hmm. If they have nothing else to talk about but you, talk about me, please. You know what I called please them? Please talk about me. You know what I called them, Rick? You ready for it? What's that? Oh. My number one fans. <laughs> Cause I'm that famous, you gotta talk about me. <laughs> How you doing? Hercules, Ciao. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> hmm. I'm telling you, it is so true. I'm telling you, give them all the grass. So true, it's so true. And That's how I feel. you know, just like just like the two of you, how you know, and like Mecca was saying that when you go through a traumatic experience, it's not a matter of the fact that you have healed. Because yes. that that feeling of of um that like that piece of you, you know, it, it's you're always gonna feel it, but you can overcome it. Yes. Because it's, over- it's always yes. gonna be there, right? Yes. But you can overcome it. And that's the most important thing is overcoming it and how you overcome. And of course, we're we're we are referring to the positivity. In overcoming yes. trauma and the positivity yes. in overcoming yes. that loss, yes. because you know if you look at where you are right now, Rick and Mecca, you look at where you are, and I look at where I am, and you think it kind of you think to yourself like, how did I get here? You know when you because when you were in that moment, I'm pretty sure you thought to mm-hmm. yourself like, I ain't never getting out of this. Like you know what I mean? Like you feel like yeah. you're gonna be in that space like that. forever, you mm-hmm. know? And like I said everybody's different some people take trauma 
and they end out mm-hmm. on the positive end, but some people yep. take trauma and they end up on the negative end. Yeah. You know, it's just like when, um, and I don't want to go veer off too topic too off topic too much, but I was on a call with, with Mecca and, um, it was about recovery and one young woman. Oh was yeah. The sharing, zoom, the event yes, the that zoom we had. Call. Yeah. Yeah, one woman was sharing. And if you look at this woman, you would not think that this is a person who was in prison like many times mm-hmm. <laughs> because she's like, you know, petite woman and stuff and how she dressed now and stuff like that. And but you would not think that, you know, by her appearance that she she went through so much and mm-hmm. all of it stemmed from a mm-hmm. bad relationship with her father, you know, mm-hmm. and her experiences when she was a child, but also the reason that she was in prison so much is because that's where she felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. She felt comfortable going back. That was like her Mm -hmm. safe place. And some things, some Mm -hmm. traumatic experiences cause you to use negative things as your safe place. But what we want (laughs) to encourage today is that you use whatever that trauma and that loss is. We want you to use that, uh, find a positive space. And I firmly believe Yes. Said, especially like as a woman of faith that at the end of the day you cannot do it without god you yep. cannot do it without yep. god yep. you know at some point in time and that's why it goes back to us where i say that each and every one of us are at a different level you know some are babies newborns um some are you know toddlers preschoolers, mm-hmm. some are youth, some are young adults. When you, mm-hmm. when you look at the levels of, you know, where you are at between your relationship with God, you know, it, it's stages, it's levels, you know, everybody starts off as a baby, you know, mm-hmm. but then when you come to the realization that like, listen, God, I cannot do it without you. Like that is the first step. It's just like when you admit that, like, um, you know, there's, there's a struggle, just like how Rick, you know, when you said that it was hard for you to express what happened, like, it was hard for you to come out and say, you know, tell, give your experience and what happened. But, you know, that, that is the main thing that you come out better, that you come out better on the other end. Yeah. You uh, know, yeah. We, what you said, um, when you spoke about that, I feel like in my eyes, what I did was I learned to, it, I had a podcast interview a few days ago and um, the lady was speaking to me about the book. So guys, I have a book coming out for 2020. It literally has like a nice detail about my story. And the lady asked me, she said, how did you allow yourself to heal? And when she asked me, how did you allow yourself to heal? I said, heal? I said, you don't really heal from something like that because you still have the anniversaries you have the dates of the anniversaries the anniversaries that you guys have together the things that you have together you got the kids that look like you got the kids that act or talk or something like them or got a birthmark like them and then as they get older as they get older that you start to see certain things about them that they have that the parent had and it's like oh you look that face you just did oh you sound just like them oh you this it's like it's always at the reminder. end of the day, it's it's always in a reminder. It's always there. And then you got the kid saying, uh, mommy or daddy, uh, um, mommy, they want to talk about mommy or they want to talk about daddy or I don't remember daddy's voice. So how do mommy look? I wish I knew mommy voice. I wish I knew daddy voice. I'm pretty sure Rick experienced that because I experienced that with my daughter, you oh, know, yeah. and, and she's 17 now and she still say she wish she remembered his voice. So there's never a healing space. There's, mm-hmm. there's a space of where you overcome, but you allow a space where in your in your life where, okay, I can manage this. I'm going to take all of that negative emotions, negative feelings, and I'm going to shift it. And I'm going to allow it to light the fuse, the fire within me to do something with it, to make right. something happen with it. You know, believe it or not, I thought it was a crime to like, I'm going to say it. I thought it was so bad to try to like monetize off of Mm. my experience. But as I start building friendships with amazing people, people that are on like different levels, 
And as I see you, they, they tell their story. I'm like, I'm sitting here afraid to tell my story. And I see these people telling their story and they dare. It's not about really focused on monetizing. It's that story allowed you to get to where you at today. Because if you didn't go do right. that, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't have that same mind frame of thinking. You wouldn't be that same person. Right. So in that space, it actually allowed you to build something out of it, to create uh-huh. something out of it. And in reality, that's how my business was created. At first, I was a, I had fear. Fear don't hold me no more because I just take late. I be like, <laughs> <laughs> because right. like when you sit back and you just hold on when you know it's like there and you want to go but you holding it back you will never o- open up I always say when you allow yourself to be vulnerable and open you build your relationship with God you know God no matter what level you on because we all are on different levels it's a continuous growing space for us at the right. end of the day and nobody right. is perfect so if somebody say they're perfect there's something wrong because right. nobody is perfect exactly so when you see stuff like that exactly what i always say is i truly believe in taking that space taking that moment right allow the negativity and the endurance to ignite that fire that you hold within to allow you to progress in life to allow you to move in life right Absolutely. and that's that's how i see it that's what i did and then right at the end of the day when you think about it it's giving yourself appreciation for doing what you're doing, giving yourself that, that space of understanding your, your kid, understanding your, um, your life, where you going at in life and what you want to do in life. And then again, what I like to really focus on is allowing yourself to be in a space of where you are okay in your space and you are happy in your space Uh and you are constantly progressing in your space. That's how I see it. When you go and do what you're going through, you want to always be able to just grow in that space. And, and not that you're holding on. What I always say is even though you holding on, you may be holding on to 50% of everything or maybe a hundred, 150% in it. And it lays heavy on your chest, your back, your head, your shoulders, and you don't feel light. When you hold on to it, you will never get anywhere. You will only stay heavy. You will not grow, progress, or level up in life. And I always say, right. when you allow yourself to be open and vulnerable, you actually release that 50 pounds to create space for 150. Right. You see how that sounds? So that, that's what, in my eyes, that's how I see taking that activity, taking that, that space of where you don't know where you're going to go next, but you, you shift it. You make that move. You make that shift. And you got to believe that you can do it. Because if I tell you how many people judged me, if I tell you how many people didn't believe in me, I have people say, oh, don't, don't, go, killing, don't go kill yourself. Or, um, or like, oh, how are you going to take care of your kid by yourself? And, and it was just so many things, right? And the focus comes where you focus on yourself. You focus right. on your relationship with God and you focus on your kid, right? And that's where your healing space comes from. Right. And allow yourself to be grounded and balanced because, Rick, I know you know this. When you have children, you really got to be grounded. You really got to be there for them. Mm-hmm. Right, Rick? Don't you think so? They see, hear everything you tell them not to. They see and hear. They watching everything you do and right. mimicking mm-hmm. you. Right. Mm-hmm. You gotta be that example. The curse. Oh, smack. How you learn how to eat that? I said, well, I'll eat that. Like kids are mirrors of you. So, you know, yes. this is why mm-hmm. this is why again I had to step up to the plate. And also I want to get back to you. You don't know how many other women that's in your situation who won't say nothing because nobody ever spoke. Absolutely. So I, I always say that people watch you sometimes and you don't even know it. Brand new gateway. Yes. You don't know. You don't, you don't know who's watching you. Like yep. around here, when school was open before the pandemic, every parent PTA, every honor roll, everything my girls had is like me and maybe two other men in the room. Mm-hmm. 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 You're not lying. You, know? you barely see so the mouth. Don't be never, never be never be afraid mm-hmm. to, to, to 
to share your experience because you never know there may be 50 other women going through mm-hmm. the exact same thing you think you went through mm-hmm. and now you just encourage them to speak up a little bit absolutely mm-hmm. so, so no, rick you. and rick and mecca um i just want you to give some last minute uh la- a few last minute words just encouraging um just just a word of encouragement um rick you could go ahead to those watching memories keep them they come true that's the one thing you have in this world is memories in my girl's room right now there's pictures everywhere of mommy before they go to bed every night they have to kiss mommy good night mm-hmm. that's just so i know that they remember her face and what she looks like and still feel her mm-hmm. um, yes memories they come true guys keep them. memories so keep the memories alive and mecca I gotta say something to, to, to Rick real quick. You know what? That's good because in somewhat way, it's like usually when the way that you're there for your daughters, it makes a difference for them because Absolutely. you know how sometimes when children grow up, they this was this was my thing, right? My thing was I never want my daughter to say, Well, I grew up without a daddy, and this is why I do this, and this is why I do that, and that is why I this. And I never wanted her to be like that. So it's like for you to be the way you are with them and still share about the mother. So it's as if they are still learning about and knowing because my daughter still acts. She got pictures of her and him in her room and everything like that, yes, holding yes. and everything. Yes. So things like that. And it helps because at least when they get older and they get in those teenage years and it's like they don't have to say, well, I grew up without a mommy. My dad just raised me. And this is why I'm this and this is why I'm that. I really believe the bond that you build with your children makes a difference for them, you know, as they grow and get older because they see things in a different way that children that actually have two parents don't see it. And and I'm being honest. It's it's the truth. They see things in a different way because they see what we go through. They actually see our, just like you said, they see our struggles. They see our movement and they, they, they clock us. So just like you said, I just feel like that yes. what you said is so important and you know it and makes that's a gonna difference be, for our children. That's gonna be a whole nother topic. The last time that we were yeah. talking, there were so many things we were like, oh, that's a whole mm-hmm. nother topic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so many struggle oh, with oh, not parenting. having parent yet. Yeah, mm-hmm. So many my, struggle my with child. not it's having right. <laughs> Yeah, like every time, um, you know, sometimes, you know, so many that struggle with, um, you know, not having a father figure, you know, or, you know, especially you, a lot of times you don't even really hear not having a mother figure, but you hear like not having a father figure um, in mm-hmm. the home. That's a whole nother topic. Mm-hmm. So, but um, I'm oh, going to wrap say it what, up. Sorry. I'm oh. sorry. Let me give them some words. Oh, um, yes. I want to say that my the takeaway for you would be to always allow yourself to love yourself and give yourself gratitude and always mm-hmm. forgive, right? Allowing yourself to receive what needs to be received, right? And it's also that space in life where you don't allow fear to hold you back and you don't allow, your situation does not create your future, right? Absolutely. It's how you maneuver through that situation is what creates your path in your future. God know your path. God know where you're going. But you have to put that work into it. You right. have to put that work. If I tell you how much work I had to put into it, and anybody that know me know how much work I put into it, then you will see all your, your the labor of everything that you've been through. You will see the labor start. Everything start flourishing. You start to see all. See all. Right. So I would say to you is to always be well-balanced, vigilant and self-disciplined and always give yourself self-love right? right number one person that should give love number one self-love and always teach your children that god is your best friend first i'm your second best friend <laughs> that's just how i see it because it, it, it makes a difference yes it does it really does so uh that's, that's what right. i would say to you and love and peace and blessings to you guys Nice. Awesome. Thank you so much. We just just two things to do before we leave this live, but thank you so much, Mecca. Thank you so much, Rick. Um, you know, myself and Rick, we go way back. I've been a member of the Council of Council for Unity 
uh, leadership for some years. Some years. No. That's, no. <laughs> that's where I, I know. That's how I know Rick. And um, it was a is an awesome. Um, you know, I, I don't even want to. I don't want to just call it leadership program. I would say it's an awesome it's a, movement. It's an awesome movement. movement. Um, you know, Very I've true. seen it personally change the lives of you know those who were con um um uh, convicts and um you know wow. I, I like so and now you would never know because they're just like such positive people and giving back. Rick, I remember when we went to Sing Sing Maximum Facility Prison. Ah. I, rem- yes. I still remember that. I remember when wow. we all went there tour. and in Sing Sing. Um, yeah. You know, want to show kids some things that they think they may know from their friends or TV. No, let's go see real life. This is real life. Wow, this is that, real. Well, yes. That, so stop that day, on the street. You know, end up there. That day I was like, I don't want to go there. <laughs> but um, it, it did touch my heart, though, um, because, it, you know, the Council for Unity program that are they still in Sing Sing? Right. Yeah, the, the still, council like, that's in twenty two schools, um, three prisons, prison. and we're taking up right. The you know, when yes. when we went to the prison, you know, and we got to sit down with the inmates that are in the program, you know, of course the ones that are not a harm, <laughs> but you know, even <laughs> that experience and seeing how most of them were just so young and having life sentences, um, and and you know, and the yes. moment where I was leaving the prison and they weren't like that was, you know, kind of like, I mean, that was heartbreaking, you know what I mean? Because, and it just, it just shows like the type of heart that you have. It just shows like the, 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 the love for humanity, you know, I'm, you're mm-hmm. not going to like everybody in this world. Mm-hmm. I didn't know any of the convicts that were in there, but the fact that I know that they, you know, I, I was able to leave that you, you know, that like, okay, they, they got to pay for their consequences. You understand that portion, but still, you know, having, you know, when you have the love in your heart for humanity and for people mm-hmm. and, you know, just the genuine love for people and wanting to see the life change. Um, that is definitely something awesome that council for unity does. So, um, and if you want to know more about council for unity, um, and you want to know more about where you can find Rick. Rick has a YouTube channel called Mr. Rick and Family, um, where he does videos with himself and him, his daughter. And, you know, just showing the positivity as a father figure, as a single father now, um, you know, and just planning, you know, good things and better things for himself and for his girls, you know, for the future, you know, and uh, just moving on as, a, as an educator And so I just want to thank you, Rick, so much for taking the time out, for coming on, for joining myself and Mecca. Mecca, thank you so much. I'm also going to post Mecca's link after this where you can find her um, and you can see uh, Mecca City of Wholeness on her website. Like I said, she does yoga, um, martial arts, meditation, as well as a few other products that she is um, coming out with. And also she also has a book. Yeah, right. Also, she Uh has a book. Um that she wrote um called humble haitian warrior about her late her late husband who she lost in iraq don't worry y'all i'm not gonna start crying i thought it just (laughs) (laughs) and then that's when the yoma method was created right yoma method was created like that (laughs) exactly out of the trauma she experienced the yoma method and the visions and plans that she has in her mind was created out of that trauma You know, so out of good can come out of trauma, you know, and I want to encourage those, those of you watching, or, you know, somebody that has watched to please share this video and just Mm -hmm. to let people know and encourage them that all hope is not lost. That if you've experienced something traumatic in your life, or if you, if you have experienced loss, that it's not the end of the world and that something good can come out of it, that you too can be an encouragement to another person because you never know who is watching. You never know. I've had experience in my life where people have come up to me and have told me how they were encouraged by something I did on one another and not even Mm -hmm. realizing that I was being watched or, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, you never know. You could be walking down the street or in your neighborhood and, you know, somebody might just admire you, you know, and you don't even know that, you know, they're your neighbor or something, Mm -hmm. but you don't even know that they're like, man, like, you know, I just really like how that person carry himself with this. So one, one mm-hmm. quick thing before I leave that just popped into my head about yes. my mother. 
when I picked up from the airport that day, we're driving back to, to my house in Brooklyn. This Benz is in front of me. So I go around the Benz because he's driving real slow. And I go in front of him, cut him off. This mm-hmm. Benz pulls up on the side, three cars and get out. This guy came out the car looking like Shaquille O'Neal with dreads. Very tall guy. I'm a small guy. My mother's sitting in the right here. I'm like this, looking straight. He comes, bangs on the glass. Yo, you think that's funny? You think that's funny? I, I, I look like this. I looked at him. And I said, I'm like, Mom, I'm not getting beat up in front of you so you can put it on Facebook. No. Nah. So you so that and that it. would that wouldn't have been the old you before before the this experience. The old right? me? Forget it. Wow. So, you forget it. But thank my mom. <laughs> no, right. So what do? before um, you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna play a, like a cool video for um, our audience as they watch, but I'm gonna show you guys what I did because this was a live crafting chat session. I don't know if Rick finished his coloring page <laughs> or what Mecca did. Yes, just- I did. I finished. But, I finished um, with the label on it. Wait, this is what I made uh, while we were. It might look a little blurry now, but pair of earrings. It was simple. This is what I did while we were. Um, sitting down um and chatting and whatnot so and mecca she made some essential oils look at that yoma method so it's called yoma method essential essence release recover resilient mm. i just love it get it. Awesome. Get it. Get it. oh i like it rick <laughs> all right yeah. okay. i like oh. it <laughs> I'm not playing. So, so you know this is a chat session. I can do it in the live. Yes, somebody had Rick had to do something. So Rick Rick was coloring. Rick had his you know, had coloring something. book out. So um we just thank you guys so much for watching. And I am going to thank you guys share um a video with you guys. Just to end out on a cool, a cool moment, um, Rick and Mecca, I just want you guys to tell me um, because I want to make sure that I want to make sure you can hear it. Nothing without you.
nothing without you. Oh, nothing bye. without you. No, we gotta leave on a higher positive note. Nothing without you. Yeah, yeah. Nothing without you. Yeah, yeah. You gotta celebrate yeah, yeah. life. Thank God for life. Nothing without you. Nothing without you. Thank you everybody for watching. <laughs> See you guys later. We love you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you at the next show, baby. Later, the next guys. Show. Later, Rick. Nice meeting you, bro. <laughs> Later, yes. have a good one. Take care, baby. Enjoy. <laughs>